It's not, um, it's not a mimetic kind of space. It's not a trompe l'oeil. It doesn't, it's not an attempt to fool the eye. So it's not about us physically wanting to enter this painting. It is about us mentally wanting to enter the painting. And exploring it. And exploring that painting. So what's presented on the other side of the canvas is a world, an entire universe, in fact, that we can actually begin to explore. But I think that's what Western painting has been about. In essence, it's about creating an alternative reality on the other side of the picture plane. And if that's going to work, the space has to be convincing, it has to be believable. The first connection you make is photography. You see this as almost as being like a, a, a painted photograph. But when you start to really analyze the spaces, you realize that it's actually an impossible viewpoint. But you do use photography. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the problems is that we don't really have a way of discussing this kind of painting. We do have a way of discussing previous forms of realist painting and photography, which is essentially about standing in one place and having a fixed vision and we see we see photographs as being very convincing as very being very believable so I think when viewers to these paintings see them as being convincing they make that equation with photography as a sort of shorthand the problem is of course that this really is completely the opposite to photography because photography enforces that idea of a very single perspectival structure now, what if we want to take on the problem of making paintings that deal with the movement through time, the movement through space? Now, we know that there is a forerunner to that in Cubism and Futurism, but the problem that they had is they were not really concerned resolving that as a conceivable, coherent, single entity. There is a realist resolution to that, but we don't really have a language to discuss that yet, because this is not to do with looking back towards photography, it's looking forward to a new way. The camera is a way of me collecting information, things that I see along the way. Mm. Through that journey, the camera's a very useful tool, as is the sketchbook, and I shouldn't underestimate the importance of drawing, even if the chaos of in the, in the city only allows you to make a five minute drawing. Mm. That drawing is crucial. Well, there's a lot of the photographs um, here, aren't there, of, of, of the ones that you took for this particular painting. Um, the man in the yellow jacket. Yeah. His friends have gone and the bus has arrived, which I imagine might have been in another photograph. You can see how each one of them connects with a particular part of yeah. your painting, but there's no way that um, you could photograph this view, is there? What the photographs demonstrate really is how limited photography truly is. It, has, it can focus on one thing. It can only have an exposure for one area of the scene. It can't deal with movement in time. So it really is a, quite a limited way of recording the world. You know, we've, in, we've entrusted lens-based media to be the final word, world in, word in realism. But in fact, it is far from it. Then there's the actual facture, the actual making of them, because um, Close to, they are marks and brushstrokes. Mm. You mm. obviously really enjoy the medium, the actual viscous quality of the paint as, mm. it's, as you kind of lick it onto the canvas. The painter creates space through the physical mark. Uh, and I, I do things to reinforce that. I'm very particular about the quality of the brushes. You know, I'm using good quality sort of sable brushes and once the spring of the brush is gone, it no longer delivers the right kind of mark. I deliberately use lead-based white, which actually reinforces the thickness of the paint. It slows the brush down. It makes sure that each brush is delivered properly. There's no blending going on. There's no attempt to destroy the painted language. This has nothing to do with trying to say this is like the surface of a photograph or it's like the surface of a window. I think my paintings are very much rooted in Western painting traditions, and that includes Canaletto, and Canaletto dealt with the city. What Canaletto shows us in terms of that mixing of space is that 
you know, an artist, even though they may use optical devices, and we, we know that Canaletto certainly did use optical devices to record things in a quite a topographical way, that when it came to constructing those paintings, you know, he, at that point he became creative and he began to, began to manipulate, change, and alter things to create these idealised worlds. If you do some of the similar things to, to, to an earlier artist, you actually stumble in. You actually begin to understand what Canaletto is doing if you confront those same kinds of problems. I mean, these aren't, uh, Canaletto is not a topographical painter, and we need to be very clear about that. He's not interested in recording the city for documentary purposes. That's an interesting and fascinating byproduct. He is interested in making idealised worlds. These are Rococo paintings. They have all the traits of, of, of other paintings around that time that are talking about the aesthetics of light and space in a very particular way. And Canaletto is sort of a master of economy, a master of, of fluidity, a recognition that you know, this isn't about labour that makes painting. This is about creativity, invention, intuition, uh, a certain speed of delivery. And we see that in abundance in Canaletto. There might be people with a certain cast of mind that read this as a social commentary with the road sweeper outside, the rundown condition of the public transport system. It is a fallacy to think of, of issue-based art. Issue-based art is illustration. It returns to this world, and that, that clearly is, 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 is not art. I'm certainly not thinking about any of the social implications of any of this stuff. It happens to be there. I happen to look at it. Artists have no, uh, no special insight into the world at all. Their special insight is to create paintings, is to create works of art. I think there are certain things that I do to try and detract from iconic readings. Because I paint so much, I include everything. No one object really stands out and takes on iconic importance. So the meaning of the painting is not uh, the, the Union Jack or, or the figure or the road sweep or any of this detritus in the window or the underground because everything becomes the subject matter. So what is the subject matter? Well, the subject matter is my engagement with the space, my engagement with the world. 